First of all, thank you for coming. It's good to see so many people here. I wasn't sure whether we'd get a full room, but yeah, that's brilliant. Uh, I'm Mark from FaZe, and I'm also on the GSC committee. Um, I'll be chairing part one of this session, and uh, Lucy, who's the chair of GSC, will be running part two. So, um, archaeological geophysics, why do we do it? Well, to identify sites, do we use it to target trenches? Or do we, should we be using it to get the maximum information possible? Is it done well? Often, but I would argue not always. And I think generally it could be done better. And does it matter that we may not be doing it as good as we can? That's kind of up to you to decide and ponder as we go through this session. So the purpose of this session is to get feedback from the wider archaeological community. Um, to find out what you all think about the state of archaeological geophysics, how and where we can improve things. We need your input to ensure that any updated guidance is relevant, but also is going to be used by the wider community. Otherwise, we'll be basically where we are now, where we do have guidance, which may be referenced, but often, if not all the time, isn't strictly adhered to. So, we want to improve on that, we want to get it so it's regularly used. Now, some of the themes of this conference session were values and benefit. Uh, one of the main benefits of geophysics is we can find sites that we would not otherwise know about, which is quite important for archaeology. But can we add extra value? Can we add value to what we're currently providing from a geophysical survey? At this conference, we'll also be voting on chartered status for archaeologists to raise the profile of archaeology and emphasise professionalism and commitment to quality. But do we also need to raise the profile and highlight the need for greater professionalism for geophysics within the archaeological sector? Are we okay with anyone collecting data who may have had a few hours or a few days training? Are we okay with archaeologists producing interpretations and reports who may have significant archaeological experience but may only have a basic understanding of geophysics? Um, so this part of the session we've called Introspection into Prospection. Basically, we're going to think about how geophysics is used, what geophysics is. Um, one of the things we want to consider is, have we got too caught up with using magnetics to cover as much area as possible? Often not seeming to have the flexibility to adapt our strategies to obtain more or better information. How do we best display the results so that geophysics and the end, geophysicists and the end users can get the most out of it? How can we better integrate geophysical data into a wider project? What happens, once, what happens to the data once the report is completed? We'll be looking at some of these issues in the following presentations, which include techniques other than magnetics, large-scale surveys, and the unique issues and benefits from those, and the problems with how the data that we collect can be archived and accessed in the future. Uh, when I first came with the idea of doing a talk, Mine was, why aren't we doing it like this? And I wanted to list all the things that I think we should be doing better. But unfortunately, because I haven't introduced this, I didn't have time. Some of the points I think are critical are on the handout that hopefully most of you have. Um, and it would be good to get everyone's feedback on that. Uh, I've no doubt a few of you will have been thinking, oh no, Mark's going to bang on about card surveys and half metre intervals again. Um, well, I do have time for a few slides, so I am going to show a couple of bits of data. So here I'm just going to compare quickly some data sets. Now, this was a site where an archaeological survey had been done. Uh, the client came to us um, when they were well into the development to say they'd, they'd come across some unexpected mine workings. So my first question was, have you looked at magnetic data? Um, and send us it. So this is what they sent. Now, when I saw this, to me, it didn't look like particularly good data. Interestingly, I've shown this slide to development control archaeologists, and they said that whilst they could see the data looked a bit odd, they wouldn't necessarily know if that was bad data. They thought it was down to possibly geological conditions or just local site conditions. But anyway, this geophysical report that this was part of was used to target trenching, and the archaeological condition had been discharged on this site, and they were well into building. But we went on and we collected what data we could. Um, most of the site had either already started building, contained material, or the ground had been so disturbed that we couldn't survey. So we could only survey some pockets of it. Um, this is our survey in the bottom, using our multi-sensor cart system. And I've kind of tried to show the previous survey data 
at the top there, the equated to our survey. You can see some common features there, common anomalies, <coughs> and some bipolar ones down there. But the sharp eyed amongst you, or at least those near the front, um, might see a few things. There's a linear anomaly in our cart data, it's just not there. And another linear, it's not there. Um, a nice isolated response there. And there's something in that data, but it wasn't picked as an isolated response. That was a mine shaft. And just next to the mine shaft, another linear. Um, now, this is a bad survey. I'm not saying that cart data is better than the data that was collected in terms of the instrument in this slide. I'm saying this was survey just wasn't very good. So did the person set out to deliberately collect bad data? Did they collect it, realise it was rubbish and weren't too bothered about it? Or did they just not know what they were doing, despite the fact they were pitching themselves as doing an archaeological survey? How many similar surveys to this happen across the UK every year? And how do we recognise it? And how can we stop it? I'm going to show a quick comparison of instrument types. Now this is literally a site that we just sent out a report for last week, so it's hot off the press. So we surveyed the site with our high resolution card system. Um, here you can see we found a nice bit of archaeology, but also in the card data, hopefully this translates, we found um, a quite weak but quite obvious linear anomaly. And again, at the top there's other weak responses that are clearly there caused by some sort of subsurface feature. Um, but we finished this survey a bit ahead of schedule. So I sent our guys back out with some handheld instruments. And this is what we got. So that's a handheld instrument, same range. You can't see the um, weak linear anomaly in the handheld data. And that's the raw data. Um, There's the normal striping you get from a dual sensor instrument. But I think that's pretty good raw data. So this is good handheld data compared to high resolution CART. And in the CART data, I would argue, you can see anomalies that you can't see in the handheld. Uh, we did a similar thing in another field. So in this case, this is the handheld data. You can see a bit of linear there, something coming across there. And this is our cart data. So I think you can see the anomaly stand out clear up there. You know, not much of a difference, but there is a difference. What about that? In the handheld data, I don't think whatever that curve, uh, circular response with a response in the middle is, wouldn't have been picked up. Um, these were within two days of each other. Again, you might notice that's there, that's there. Basically, um, that was an animal feed trough that farmer had moved by the time we did this. But this was only a couple of days apart. Um, you need to make your own conclusions about this, I guess. But as far as I'm concerned, if you undertake, specify, or commission a magnetic survey where a handheld instrument is used rather than a high resolution cart, you are increasing the chances of missing archaeology. Um, on that bombshell. Um, I would like to think this session is going to help us find ways to improve how archaeological geophysics is undertaken, utilised and understood. And I sincerely hope that we find out that we're just not stuck in the mud to make any progress. Mm -hmm.